Hello everyone. In this grammar lesson, we're going to be taking a look at sentence fragments. Sentence fragments. A sentence fragment occurs when you incorrectly present an incomplete thought or a dependent clause as a complete sentence. So if your phrase or your clause, the sentence that you're presenting, is actually incomplete, it doesn't contain all the necessary information in terms of a subject or a verb, making it a dependent clause, or if it has a subordinated conjunction without an attached independent clause, you have a sentence fragment. Sentence fragments are logical mistakes and mistakes in expression because they present an unfinished idea that only adds confusion to your essay or whatever piece of work you're producing. It leaves out some salient necessary piece of information in what should be a sentence that prevents the reader from actually understanding what it is that you're trying to say. Incomplete thoughts. Any word combination without a subject and a conjugated verb is an incomplete thought. Remember that we've talked about clauses, we've talked about comma splices, independent clauses, dependent clauses. Essentially, you are looking at something that lacks at least one of the key necessary elements for the sentence to actually be a proper sentence, for it to be an independent clause. It therefore cannot stand alone as a complete thought. Some examples of these incomplete thoughts or sentence fragments. Finally, feel, finally feels free. For example, milk and cheese. This second example is actually quite common. After you say something in your essay, you might be tempted to write, for example, etc., etc. For example actually indicates that what you have here is a dependent clause that has to be attached to the independent clause of the previous sentence where you listed off something or where you mentioned something, uh, unless it also has a subject. You could say, for example, milk and cheese are dairy products. In There Will Come Soft Rains by Ray Bradbury, or to be the best person I can be. These incomplete thoughts don't possess a subject or verb. One of the ways we can tell whether a uh, sentence is an incomplete thought and thus not truly a sentence is by looking at the verb form in the sentence. If your main verb or if your principal verb in the sentence only has the ing ending, you don't have something that is complete. You don't have a properly conjugated finite verb. Phrases that use a word ending in ing are oftentimes fragments. So examples, acting like complete opposites. That sentence has no principal main finite verb, and it also has no subject. Swimming in the ocean. An ing verb can never be the only verb in a sentence because these verbs are not conjugated. A gerund or participle, shining, swimming, or the like, is actually working grammatically like an adjective. So remember what we said about um, clauses and phrases, participle phrases, gerund phrases. Another way that you can create a sentence that is not actually a sentence, it's a sentence fragment, just a piece of a sentence that's not a complete thought and that doesn't have the elements necessary for an independent clause's formation, would be when you have infinitive verbs in the sentence as opposed to a properly conjugated main verb. Phrases that use an unconjugated infinitive verb, that is a verb with two in front of it, so two in the base form of the verb, are oftentimes fragments. As examples, to believe in the future, to go swimming in the ocean. In order to have a conjugated and complete sentence, you must have a subject and a conjugated verb, past, present, or future tense. The other kind of sentence fragment is a dependent clause. If you have one of those subordinating conjunctions at the start of your clause, right, without it being attached to an independent clause, then your dependent clause cannot stand alone. A dependent clause, like an incomplete thought, cannot stand alone. And it is, in fact, an incomplete thought. A dependent clause does not have a subject and or a conjugated verb. Examples. After she lets Flora flee, free. I have to stop having these repeated F sounds because I keep on slurring my words here. Obviously, I'm not good at tongue twisters. After she lets Flora free, what happens after that? It's not a complete thought. The subordinated conjunction after here turns this independent clause of she lets Flora free into a dependent clause, and thus it can't stand alone. Before all the chips are gone, what happens before all the chips are gone? Maybe before all the chips are gone, we have to go to the store. Remember, it doesn't matter what comes before or what comes after your sentence. If you place an incomplete thought or a dependent clause in between two periods, you are constructing a sentence fragment. Louise experiences change, finally feels free. Finally feels free, obviously, is a sentence fragment. Louise experiences changes and finally feels free. 
acting like complete opposites. The mother and father have different roles. Acting like complete opposites, comma, the mother and father have different roles. Remember that you need to attach your dependent clause to an independent clause in order for it to be grammatically correct and to avoid a sentence fragment. Now, these examples that I provided to you are not particularly challenging. Or we can see them because they're concise and fairly focused. However, if your sentence does not have that main verb, a properly conjugated verb and a subject, well, it's still a fragment. So read your sentences carefully, thinking about the rules, the necessary components for a sentence or for an independent clause or a complex or compound or complex compound sentence. If you don't have that properly conjugated main verb and that subject, it's still a sentence fragment. So try to apply these concepts to the more complex sentences that you are trying to construct. On Omnivox, you will see a worksheet on sentence fragments that has been posted. Now, this worksheet also includes sentence uh, fragments, comma splices, and fused sentences. So, a bit of a review on the two topics that we've already covered, and sentence fragments. The instructions suggest that students can work in pairs or small groups to suggest different ways of rewriting. However, this is a worksheet that you can complete on your own, individually, on your own time, as practice for these three concepts. Once you have run through this uh, set of examples, you can review the answers that I have posted on Omnivox alongside of it. So you'll see this worksheet in this module, along with the video lecture, this video lecture that has been posted, and the answer sheet for this uh, worksheet. You can complete this and then move on to the sentence fragment quiz that will be handed in by the end of the week on turnitin.com.